It's good to be back. Um, this week we've got some great new products to talk to you about. We have. Uh, brand new in is Piper Active, where RSVP Magic, James Piper. Yeah, these have literally just been released. We've just got them in. Um, Russ showed me some of the routines when he was editing them. He sent them over. Yeah. And there's some great, great stuff on there. It's um, mainly sort of coins and cards. Mm -hmm. Good sleight of hand magic. Right. Um, James Piper, to be honest, was someone I, I was totally unaware of. I hadn't really heard his name yeah. um, a lot, so I, I wasn't aware of what material he did. But it's very, very impressive. Yeah, technically, um there's some really great stuff in here. There's some uh, easier stuff and some more intermediate, uh, difficult coins and cards stuff. But all of it is very well routined uh, and, and very clever. And I think you can adapt it to yourself. It's not just, you. sometimes you buy a DVD and you go, oh, they're great, but it won't suit me and yeah. my performance style. Whereas this, uh, very easily you can take the routines, adapt it to you. Uh, and there are some really cool, some difficult, but some very impressive slides. So, yeah, it's a, it's a nice set. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to put the, or put one of the trailers, because there are various trailers going around for this where Russ has put up full routines, yeah. not the explanations, obviously, but the full routines to let you see what they're like. But we're going to drop in a trailer now so you can see uh, the trailer for this. But for more information, please visit the website because there's so much material on here. Yeah. And the good thing is they're, they're all real world uh, routines, you know. They're, they're, real what? Real world routines. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, it's not YouTube magic. It's stuff that you can do. He's, it's stuff that, you know, sometimes you see effects that look great, but you can only sort of view them from this yeah, angle yeah. straight on. And as someone that goes out working, you know that you need to have a, a bigger yeah. angle on, on effects. Um, so these routines are totally geared for, for being out there working. Yeah. Um, so yeah, here's the trailer for Piper Active. You ready for a bit of danger, ladies? Yes, yeah, yeah, danger, you know? <laughs> actually, by showing you this, what I'm about to show you, I'm actually risking my life. I really am, you know, I'm gonna to reveal to you some of, the, some of the, the, the best kept gambling secrets that people use to manipulate people out of money. Let me show you what I mean, okay? Get rid of the box. We don't need the box. There's lots of different. Let me just show you. We've got a deck of cards. Yeah, they're all they're all different. There's lots of different methods that gamblers will use. The first one I'm going to show you is called the watch peak, and this is what happens. Okay, the gambler would be holding the deck. And he'll pretend to look at the time, but really what he's doing is riffling down with his thumb and he's trying to spot an ace. I just saw one. Yeah, I just spotted an ace. I really did. And then any time that you need a, he cuts it down to the deck. Watch this closely. Ace of diamonds, and then he deals it off the bottom of the deck, which is kind of sneaky, yeah? Hold your hands out for me, just like this. Let me see if I can show you that again, look. I'm just gonna do this. I pretend to look at my watch, but really I'm looking down here, and I see the net. Did you see, you saw that ace, didn't you? Not really. where, where was it? Have a guess. Got bad eyes. Yeah, I saw it, it was like about 33, 34 cards down. Let me just have a guess. There we go, 33 cards down, the ace of clubs. Now this time, I'll try and find the two remaining aces just using one cut. But I've got to do two riffles. Is that okay, Aga? If I do yeah. two riffles, you sure? Yeah. Okay, there we go. Watch. <laughs> that's one, that's two. I spotted the two aces. I really did. But I've just got to give the deck one cut, and I bring the ace of heart to the bottom. And the last one, the, the most magical one, the ace of spades, I cut up to the top. <laughs> Isn't that weird? So we've got the ace of spades, the ace of clubs, diamonds, and hearts. Now, there is another method that gamblers use. What they will do is they will take some cards out of the deck, the aces, and they will change the color on them slightly. So you don't know what to look for unless you really know what's, what, what's, take, what's, what's happened, yeah? But if you, if, if you watch closely, you may be able to see the different colors on the backs of the aces. Can you see that? <laughs> it's a slightly different shade, yeah? Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, it stands out a little bit, yeah? It's it horrible, that's <laughs> gambling. <laughs> Now watch this closely, I'm going to take the aces and place them down into different parts of the deck, one at a time. Now it's important that you see that they're all going into different parts of the deck. Can you see that? Yeah. Different sections into the deck. Now if you know what you're looking for, I mean that really stands out, yeah? yeah. You can spot that on my love. Now I'm going to do this one last time, but this time I'm going to try and find all four aces with just one watch peak. This took me eight years. Eight years of my life to get this one move. Watch this closely. That's one, two, three and four. 
found them. Found the four aces. And then all I need to do is give the deck a squeeze and the four aces will pop out. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Hold your hands out again for me. But you see, this time I didn't use different shaded aces. You see, this time, Emma, I used a different shaded deck. <laughs> Check it weird. out. Take a look. There we go. You can keep those as a little souvenir. Thanks that for watching. Wow. I love that. I know. Yeah, me too. There we go. <laughs> Right, so the next trick we have for you is the Volunteer Swindler. This is great fun. It's really, really cool. Yeah. Um, the basic effect is you show two bills. Um, you can make them up in any currency. Mark talks about that on the DVD. Um, now, the, the basic effect is a two bill transposition, like a five for a 10 or a 10 pound note for a 20 pound note. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I was just looking in my head there. Yes, you are correct, Peter. Um, now, what you get in this little package is a DVD where Mark explains everything, how to make up your gimmicks, and he makes them sort of live while you're watching them. Yeah. And they yeah. literally take a minute each. Yeah. You know, a minute, minute and a half. And once they're made, that's it. You use those bills yeah. for forever. Um, but he also supplies, which is a really nice touch, a practice bill. So you can see one that's constructed, you can practice with it um, and get used to it. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to show you what the change looks like, but then we're also going to drop in the trailer so you can see the full routine. The reason why we're not going to do the routine for you now is because we haven't made up our set yet. We're we want to show you this, it's just come in, it's hot off the press, um, but we will be making up a set for the store, so maybe in a, a later episode we'll actually do it live, but on the trailer, what you see is what you yeah, get. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's really, really clean, really, really good. Um, so this is using the practice bill. Yeah, I'm hoping you can, because there's no real color contrast on no. this bill. But obviously um, in the UK bills or any other bills, there will be a color contrast. But that's yeah. a, a $5 bill. And you can show that. Um, and there is something special about it. Yeah, there's a slit in the middle of it. Okay, and what that does, uh, it's an old swindle, okay, which allows you to fold it almost like origami fold to make it look like I actually have two fives. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you would pay with this and they would think they've got a tenner when really it's two fives, but you're gone by the time they open it. Um, if however they catch up with you, it's very simple. You just have to shake and you get a, a 10 and now there's no uh, slit in the middle and there's the tent and the five would reappear in your wallet with the slit with the slit in it um, and it's really lovely really easy really visual and you just keep it in your wallet yeah it's great and it will be a great opener great for walk around um, there are ways that you could work out to do this in someone's hand as well I should think you yeah. know hand on one of the bills or hand them yeah. both take one out and you know um, just the swindle on its own is fun yeah it's a nice way in to uh, and it makes complete sense. You yeah. know? You're not going, oh, I'm going to change your bill. It's, have you seen yeah. this? Have you seen this? And if you fold it like that, you could get away with yeah. you know, using it as a tenner or really just use a tenner. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, very, nice. very, very nice. So that's the uh, volunteer swindler. Um, and that's new from JB Magic. And that's in stock now. So the next item we have for you is Matchbox by Dave Forrest and Mark Mason. Now, this is something that you got in. Yes. Because? Um, because I used to use it all the time. When I was growing up in Magic and I bought a lot of JB stuff and one of the stuff that always stuck with me was Matchbox. And I lost the gimmick and I was gutted. Uh, and I saw it come up and I just know that it's such a visual trick and there's two really great moments of magic in it. Uh, and, and I was like, we've got to get these in because they're just so much fun. It just takes a card trick in a different direction. So it's uh, Matchbox is a, it's a card revelation. Yes, it is. But there's two, as I say, two visual moments. Um, one where you visually bring a picture to life and the second one where you pop, uh, where you kind of pull some of the picture and turn it into reality. Um, it, it is awesome. It right. really is. And you're going to demonstrate that for us. Yeah. But um, just a couple of pointers. 
Yeah. Uh, sleight of hand wise, is it difficult, easy, intermediate? Uh, I'd say it was easy borderline to intermediate, but is it, I mean... The, the same as any other things like mystery box or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same it, sort of process, so... It, it's very straightforward in, in the workings of it. Um, yeah, but it's one of those things, once you've got the, move, the couple of bits down, which I think are quite generic to any magician, so you probably already know them. Yeah. Um, it, it's straightforward and very simple. Okay, and the other question I had was it is not a false card, it's any card, yeah. and it's signed, signed uh -huh. if you want it to be signed. Yeah. Okay, so let's watch David performing Matchbox. Mm. Pete, I'm going to answer a question which a lot of people ask, which is how, how do you get into magic? And I'm going to answer that in a second, but before I do, I'd like you to grab a card out for me, and you can have any one. I'm going to have this one. You take that one. I'm going to have it. Okay. <laughs> and, um, Write your name on the face of the card for me. Okay, my face. Uh, yeah, just his. <laughs> Super. And pop it back there for me. And don't recap the pen. Uh, uh, because I'm going to tell you, how I got into magic was a little different. I mean, I was doing magic when I was at school. Um, but I was a little bit of a nuisance. Not like, like you are now. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, my teacher struggled to get me to lessons. Right? Yeah. And my art teacher was great. She she kind of said, look, she used a little bit of friendly blackmail. If you come to my lesson, I'll teach you how to bring pictures to life. So I was like, well, okay, yeah, awesome. I'd love to learn that. So she, she draw, draws a picture of an orange and she puts two dashes at the left and two dashes on the right and goes, that brings the picture to life. I very shortly after that left that class and uh, decided to come up with my own way to do it. Right. Now you've, you've signed a card I and selected it and we'll come to that in a minute but I'm going to draw something. Now despite being a bit of a nuisance um, when I was younger, of course not today, um, I was actually quite good at art. It was one of the lessons that uh, um, I kind of just do my own thing in. So if I was to show you this, you probably would know what that was I've drawn. Some sort of Cuboid. Cuboid. Yeah, I mean, it's more of a box, if I'm honest. Right. Can you see that there? It's like a little matchbox. Is it? Okay, sometimes it's not my art, it's the person looking at it that can't see past the card, but hopefully you can see that it is a matchbox. And if I take that and use my imagination to open the matchbox. Oh. Yeah? You can actually see now that matchbox is open, almost like there is a card folded for in quarters inside the matchbox, right? Yes. So here's the thing. If I was to take this a stage further, as us magicians always do, and bring this picture to life, um, I would have to pluck that card out of the matchbox. And I'll try and do it so you can see it at home. But look, if I take it here and I just pull, really? Like this. And I can now create the image that I have pulled this card from the picture that I've just drawn. Now look, there's only one thing left to do, and that's for you to take that card, open it up, and have a look and see if that's your sign. And it is. It is. So that's Matchbox. That's really good. Really good. It's great, you know, very visual moments in it, uh, and uh, they're left with that as a souvenir, which is, you know, great. And, and I know, um, Usually when you perform this, you're standing up and yeah. everything else. So sitting down to do an effect like this is a little bit weird because of some of the moves. But this is an ideal sort of mystery box type effect, but for a walk around situation, because mm -hmm. you don't need a table for anything. That's all happening in the hands. Yeah. Um, the reset is very quick. Yeah, uh, very, very quick. And, yeah. and I mean, we're magicians, so we look at it and we'll look at it and go, oh, he's doing this there or that there. Whereas lay people see it as you have drawn a picture, brought that picture to like, like animated it and caused it to, to create a picture that was never there in the first place. And then visually bring that picture to life and it's now their card. I mean, that's a magical process to a non-magician. Yeah. So, you know, I love this effect and I couldn't give it a higher recommendation. See, I would, if I was performing that, once I, I've drawn the picture of the matchbox, yeah. I'll say not only is it a matchbox, but inside that matchbox is your card. I would actually tell them beforehand. Oh, nice, yeah. yeah so I'd say inside that matchbox is your card. I mean, obviously you can't see it, so I haven't opened the drawer. Yeah. But inside that matchbox is your card. If I had me prove it to you, I'll open the drawer. There yeah. it is, there's your card. And obviously, because you're doing it as a demo here, 
you're overemphasizing all this show in the camera. Yeah, in, yeah, yeah. in real work, it is just like there's the matchbox inside, there is your card. Let me show you, I open the drawer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you sort of do. You know, it's like you get away with a lot more than you would expect it when you're actually performing. Um, so you're right, I mean, you don't have to do fancy displays or anything like that. No, I mean, we're, we're sort of doing it, you will do it display but it, it happens so quick and I, I do think the um, you know emphasizing the fact that there are cards in there before you open the drawer yeah now you've added extra bits of suspense because first of all they think it's a bit of a gag then when you open it they're now looking down going well how can that be my how, how did it open and how can it be my card is it my card and yeah. then do you know what I mean yeah, yeah. so yeah. you're building that yeah those stages of suspense which is great yeah um, I think it's a great trick uh, I love it, um, so yeah, if you like the look of that, then uh, you're going to say something. I'm going to say one thing quickly, that comes with everything apart from the deck, so all the gimmicks ready made yeah. and everything else. You don't need to do anything. You, you, just add it to Yeah, you. just throw it in and then you're ready to go straight away. It's really good. And that's uh, Matchbox by Dave Forrest and Mark Mason. Right guys, um, as you'll be aware, this, uh, sorry, last week we released Heirloom Deluxe. We did, yeah. It's something that uh, I've been really excited about. Heirloom itself has been, you know, one of our flagship products. You know, uh, Alex Sam Magic, Heirloom has been a flagship. We released it 10, 10 or so years ago, the original. Yeah. Um, then we released it, re-released it with a DVD with extra handlings on it. Um, and it's been actually out of production for around about two or so years. And we got together with Jamie and Colin, they had had so much more work on it. Yeah. Um, and then Steve Deller approached me a while ago and showed me his photographs. Um, and we, we just put this whole collection together um, and what we've ended up with is Heirloom Deluxe. And I will say to you, at the filming of Heirloom, it was the first time I saw the presentation yeah. of Emily's Revenge. Because the guy said, yeah, we've got loads of stuff, we've got loads of bonus material, we've got loads of this and the other. So we knew this was going to be a great product. Yeah. Um, but Jamie sat me down and performed Emily's Revenge on me. and. The method didn't fool me because the method's the same as Ellen. Yeah. But the storyline did add a whole new level yeah. to, to Ellen. Yeah, and it, it, the same happened to me. And I think the first time I saw it was on a live, uh, on the filming of yeah, it. Yeah, when we were there, when we were filming there. Uh, and my reaction is genuine. Like, it did make, like yeah, you say, same here. hair stand up on your sort of shiver because you work out that last bit of the story, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, so, basically, I'm going to perform Emily's Revenge for you. Now, I will say, I've spent years and years and years performing heirloom. I've only just started, I mean, from now on, I will be performing Emily's Revenge. Yeah. I'm not as au fait with my presentation for yeah. it as I should be, because, you but, know, it's still yeah, something... Yeah, we wanted, I, I mean, there's been lots of questions. What is Emily's Revenge? Yeah, what is the effect? Because a lot of people, because it's been off the market for two years, a lot yeah. of people don't know what Heirloom is. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to give you, um, I'm going to give you a performance um, of... Emily's Revenge, but I will say also inside this package, I mean it's a beautiful, beautiful package, you get your letters, you get your photographs which are all aged, you get a DVD. On this DVD, um, not only do you get the, the full script for Emily's Revenge, you watch uh, Jamie perform it or me perform it, um, you also get uh, a full description of how the effect works obviously, but there's a bonus section so if you open up so the DVD on your computer, yeah. you're getting so much, you're getting the original heirloom DVD footage where I teach my inde uh, instant indexing system in full detail. It's great. Um, <coughs> and that will allow you to use almost any wallet. Um, because as well as releasing heirloom, we've released the heirloom deluxe wallet as well, which I'm going to use for this presentation. But you don't have to use this wallet. You can use your everyday yeah. wallet, and we teach various ways of, of doing that. Um, 
but there's also a limited, uh, it's not a limited edition, but back in the day um, when Ellen first came out, Jamie and Colin released uh, a PDF booklet. Yes. Of, it was full of routines and ideas by contributors that had played with Heirloom, come up with different ideas for it. So that's on the DVD as well as a PDF. Um, you've also got their version of a Ben Harris effect where they supply you the photos in a PDF. Um, you also get the masters for the letters as PDF. So um, if you're not happy with the letters you have in here or they wear out or you lose them, yeah. you can print them off yourself and age them yourself. And um, while while I had um, Steve Deller in the other week, uh, we filmed a streaming video, which go which you get when you purchase this as well. So it goes straight into your account uh, of the streamline handling. So brilliant. there's so much stuff that you yeah, get. Yeah, and you get Ellen Redux on there, which yeah. is a really cut down handling. So if you use an Assassin or any other sort of smallish wallet, you can do the Redux version. Uh, but anyway, enough talking about it. Let me uh, let me show you what Emily's Revenge is all about. And this is, you know, with Heirloom, to me, it's not the type of trick I would do at every table. It's the type of trick I would carry around and I'll bring it out when the time is right. When the time's right, the reactions you get to this oh, yeah. will be yeah. incredible. Um, it's far more than just a card trick. It's yeah. incredible, yeah. So, David, uh -huh. um, as well as being a magician, you know I'm a collector of the strange. Yeah. If, I, if I see things, if I hear stories that are a bit weird, I tend to get a bit engrossed with them and, and try and research them. And there was a story that, that fascinated me. I, I come across it um, on the internet somewhere. It was about a couple, and uh, the lady's name was Emily, and her husband's name was Charlie. Now, the research I did, uh, the story that went along with it was that Emily and Charlie were, met when they were very young. And Emily uh, had psychic abilities. It, you know, that, that's how the story went. Emily had this ability to see into the future. Yeah. And Charlie was a, a bit of a, a rogue. He was very streetwise. He was a bit of a gambler. And together, they started to realize that if Emily focused her powers on certain things, she could give Charlie a bit of an advantage when he was gambling. Right. So what Emily would do, Charlie would go out every night gambling and Emily would say, uh, if you see, let's say, the Ace of Spades today, I want you to bet all our money. If you see the I don't know, the four of clubs, I want you to bet all our money. And if he saw the four of clubs or the ace of spades, he would bet all his money and they would win. Right. They started to, to accumulate quite a fortune uh, doing this, you know, they, they become richer and richer and richer. And Charlie was out every night at the same gambling house. Um, but with this fortune and with this lifestyle comes all the trappings. Um, Charlie actually started having an affair with uh, one of the hostesses at a casino or at a gambling house. Um, now, Emily knew about this, but she never let on she knew until she, she got so far that she couldn't really go on with life the way it was. And that's sort of the end of the story. Now, as luck may have it, I saw some artifacts online in an auction that apparently belonged to Charlie and Emily. Right. And I bid it on these and I won them. One of the artifacts I'm going to show you right now, just hold your hand out. I want you to be sort of quite gentle with this. I'll explain what it is in a moment. But I want you to put your other hand on top. And I want you just to, to clear your mind, I want you to relax. Now I want you to imagine that you are Charlie. And Emily is going to start to speak to you. I want you to pick this up in your mind. The first thing she's going to, she's going to tell you is the value of a playing card. Not the colour, not the suit, just the value. Okay. Okay, what value are you picking up? Three. A three. Okay, and what colour is that three? What colour is she telling you it is? A black. And what suit is it? Is it a spade or is it a club? Uh, it's a club. So Emily's telling you it's the three of clubs. Three of clubs. Now remember, I said there was two items yeah. in this auction. 
That was one of them, what you have in your hands, which I will show you in a moment. This was the other, which is an old photograph. Right. This old photograph is a photograph of Charlie and Emily. And Charlie was holding the lucky playing card that he was dealt on the last night they spent together. Right. Okay. And you said the card was? Three of clubs. And what card are they holding? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. I don't know if they can see uh, the three of clubs. Let me, um, we'll take that up and show you in the camera at the moment. Wow. <laughs> but that is the three of clubs. But remember, I said this was the, the last picture taken of them. Yeah. Emily had planned her revenge. In your hand, you've got a letter. This letter apparently was given to Charlie on the last night they were together. If you open it up. Now look, I'll read it out, but you can read along with me. I will have to put on my glasses for this because yeah. I'm not getting any younger. Um, there is the letter that Dave's been holding. You can read along with me and make sure that everything I say is correct. My dearest Charlie, I know about you and Lucy. Lucy was the hostess at the club that he was having the affair with. And by now you're, you will be rich and will no longer need me. In any case, I could never go back to the way we were. So this was it. In her mind, this was the end. This right. was the final thing. Um, however, um, I shall still remember all the good times we had. And I will treasure the final photograph of us together, which is this. I enclose two tickets to the Americas so you and Lucy can start a new life together as far, as far away from me as possible. I shall not be home when you return to collect your belongings. And please do not try to find me. So basically, you know, she had set him up. Yeah. She had given him the tickets to start a new life. Just remember one thing. She could see into the future. Yeah. This final paragraph is the thing that sends a shiver down my spine every time I read it. Enjoy your voyage aboard the HMS Titanic. It is headed to a place where you truly both belong. <laughs> Emily. Oh, that, that is so strong, isn't it? That is Emily's revenge. I mean, I don't know how you could get a more powerful, yeah. emotional pull. The lovely thing about that is if you get your spectator to read it, if I usually read it out because then I can pace the way I read the letter. And then also at certain points, I can add narrative. So, you know, when she talks about yeah, Lucy, yeah. I say, and Lucy was the, the lady. And when I get to the final reveal, I tell her and say, but remember one thing, the thing that makes this so chilling is the fact that she could see into the future. Yeah. And then you read it. And then in their mind, they go, oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because at first it just seems like, God, she's, she's taken that quite easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's nice, isn't she, eh? Yeah, yeah. But that, that is Emily's revenge. Believe you me, it is so, so powerful. But with the Heirloom Deluxe, not only are you getting Emily's revenge, you're also getting the original Heirloom as well, okay? So this is another presentation for the original Heirloom. Yeah. Now, just to tell you a little bit about the wallet, this is the Heirloom Deluxe wallet, um, which is a really nice lever. One of the main benefits of this is it's been designed specifically for this effect okay so whatever it is you need for this effect fits in here beautifully yeah um, and also I can at any point uh, you know after I've taken the photo out yeah. and the letter show the wallet to be empty yeah. apart from cash or whatever it is um, so the heirloom deluxe wallet even though you can perform the effect without the wallet um, the Heirloom Deluxe Wallet has been created specifically for this effect and it works beautiful and it makes the workings um, a little bit easier as well. Yeah, and, and it does instantly dispel that thought to anyone thinking, oh, it's got more than one of this or that, yeah. or, you know. You well, know. that's a good point, actually, because um, obviously this is Heirlooms based on a, a great effect by Kenton Nepper called Colossal Killer. Mm. Now, my problem with Colossal Killer has always been, if I take a card out of my wallet, people know that cards come 
with another 51. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so where are those other 51 cards? Yeah. Photographs, people never believe, and there, there are not 52 yeah, yeah, photographs yeah. <laughs> just to get out. But, but people, if you bring out a photograph, it's a photograph. That's it, there's one. Um, the, the other thing I want to talk, and I know you've discussed this with Steve, you've discussed it with Andy, um, but the quality of the photographs now, they're on card, um, and they feel like an old photo. Yeah. And the more you use these, the older they get, the better they will become. I just think overall, in general, the fact that you can play a story that packs that much power and it's in the air, in your wallet. I mean, I think there's just beautiful as it is, the fact that uh, all of what you need is in your wallet, ready to go any time you need it to create this moment. Yeah. Um, and you've done it as, uh, uh, you know, I, I've researched this. Yeah. You know, people play it as my, my uncle, my grand, my great granddad. You know, you really put that connection into it and people connect, they really do connect through this yeah. story. It, it's all about, you know, with things like this, you've got a beautiful, beautiful kicker. Uh, by the way, that was my handling, which is the letter out first handling, yeah. which is also on the DVD in the bonus section as a PDF. I've written that up for you. Um, that's my preferred handling when I'm with a little group yeah. of people. Um, but it's, uh, you know, it. it it's such a great effect and the thing is you know when you get this wallet you can use it for other mentalism effects anyway but this wallet has now been redesigned to be your everyday wallet we have got loads and loads of credit card slots you can keep your money in it um, so this wallet you could carry around with you all the time yeah. and always be set to do this effect now we have um we've got heirloom available as a standalone product or the wallet available as a standalone product but what seems to be selling best is the combo, combo yeah. uh, you save you save five pounds i think if you buy the combo set and you're going to have an effect that will play for years and years and years and last for years. And the longer it's in your wallet, the better it looks. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing. It's not like having a playing card in your wallet that starts getting old and bent. The, yeah. the older these are, the, the better it starts to look. Um, so that is it. I think we've talked enough about it, but that is Heirloom, um, Heirloom Deluxe, Emily's Revenge. Right, well that brings us to the end of this week's vlog. Um, yep. It's been great to have you back. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, and obviously we'll be back next week uh, for a vlog every Wednesday. Competitions on the Monday. That's on Facebook. Yeah, so Facebook competition on the Monday, vlog on the Wednesday, and then the winner for the Facebook competition on the Friday. Brilliant. Fantastic. Um, and also, please do not forget because the, the vlogs are on their own separate YouTube channel now yeah. because people were saying, oh, I can't find your old ones. So we're, we've started a new YouTube channel just for the vlogs. So don't forget to subscribe. If you point at the subscribe button because I always get it wrong. All right, let's try this. I'll move here, here. Yeah. Wherever it is, subscribe. And we'll see you next week on the Alakazam video blog. Why was the sign in the bin? Huh? Why was the, the big Alexam sign? And why did it have Spellman sprayed on it? Um, <laughs> where did you find that? It was in the skip. There's a skip outside. <laughs> then I've heard from our IT guys, someone had hacked the site <laughs> and changed right. the man's face. Yeah, uh, what it was. What's been going on while I haven't been here? Spellman. Now I know you said say he's not allowed in the shop, but he, I let him in, and, and he tried to take. And it, it, it was, was he dressed as a little old lady again, saying she had lost her puppy. <laughs> no, not this time. No, I know he had, just to get in the story, he's dressed up as some random things. But no, the long and short of it was, what is the mentalism vlog? He was around, uh, and then tried to overtake the shop. He always tries to overtake the shop. I will say it once more, never let Mark in here while I'm not here. Okay.
he's a bully. <laughs> yeah. And he will try. And was he going on about that Spellman Kazam idea? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> well, let this be. Well, I think you should watch the vlog. I will watch the vlog now. I know. Yeah. We well, got a new sign out of it anyway, so stop moaning. Yeah, let's pay for it. You. Right.